Hi, I'm Neil Russell and I'm the Programme Director for Training by EOS. As Senior Examiner for the ICAEW Case Study Exam from 1999 to 2010, I was responsible for delivering 25 case study exams and during that time more than 50,000 scripts came across my desk. So I really do know the sort of mistakes that students can make. Since we began training by EOS, we've provided tuition and support to many students, both those taking the exam for the first time and those resitting it. Our students come from large and small firms based in the UK and internationally. We are proud of the help that we give our students to identify the tuition programme that best suits their particular needs and their success is reflected both in our pass rates, which we publish after each exam and which are consistently higher than the ICAEW equivalent, and in the high level of personal recommendations that lead new students to us. In this video, we'll take you through what you need to do to prepare for your case study exam and how we can help you. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with the exam, the terminology that's used or how it's marked, then watch our other free video, An Introduction to the Case Study Exam. So, how do you start preparing for your case study exam? Whether this is your first attempt or a resit, we can help. A senior examiner for 11 years, Neil was well placed to identify some clear trends in the results. So first of all, Let's look at the profile of competent grades for each of the five elements of the exam. Taking them in order, we start with requirement one, the financial statement analysis. Most students tackle this pretty well, as you would expect in your third year of training. The only real danger here is spending too much time on this requirement, precisely because you can do it. We actually think that requirement two the financial data analysis is actually the hardest part of the exam because first you only get all the information you need on the day of the exam and you then have to deal with it under exam pressure. Second, it combines both number work and strategic discussion. However, as you can see, requirement three, operational and strategic analysis and ethics, is the worst scoring element. We believe this is because, one, students don't have enough ideas to talk about. In other words, their preparation is just not good enough. Two, students tend to answer the question they want to answer and not the one that is actually in the exam paper. And three, students simply run out of time. In the fourth element, the executive summary, students again tend to run out of time or they don't have a plan and so they don't cover all the requirements to the right level of detail. And finally, in the fifth element, most students competently present their report and appendices. Now let's look at a profile of competent grades by skill. You don't need to have 50% competent grades in each skill to pass but it will help you to make the most of your preparation time if you know which skills you need to focus on. Most students can do SPS, Structuring Problems and Solutions, pretty well. This is your number work or your basic strategic analysis, such as SWOT and the first level of your commentary on it. However, A and UI, assimilating and using the information from the case, is not done as well as you might expect. Too many students don't use enough of the wider issues in the case material to develop their commentaries. Look at the competency box at the bottom of the A and UI column. When we review a script that has failed, we always look to see what grades were given here. They are nearly always IC or less. Moving on to CNR, conclusions and recommendations. We find most students are okay at conclusions, 
but poor at recommendations. So you need to ensure your recommendations flow from your analysis and are commercial, practical and specific. Finally, AJ, applying judgment. This is done the worst and that's not surprising because it's all too easy to jump from your analysis straight to your conclusions without demonstrating how you have applied your judgment. However, if you look at the competency boxes within AJ, you'll see that competency is given for prioritising key events, making links between business issues, evaluating options or developing your arguments by providing more depth of analysis, demonstrating your professional scepticism, assessing the impact of the ethical issues. Developing your ability to apply your judgment is an area in which small improvements can make a big difference to your performance. Based on these two grade profiles and our work with students, I consider there are four imperatives to passing the case study exam. First of all, improving your business awareness. I mean your ability to explain how a business works, how it makes its money, the big issues that it's facing and how it can deal with them. Secondly, your advanced information preparation. That is your knowledge of the material provided for the case study business. The better you know it, the easier and quicker it is to develop your commentaries and arguments in the exam. Rather than struggling for ideas, it's then a question of making sure you don't write too much. The third thing is your decision making at the start of the exam, choosing what you're going to write about. And finally, your planning during the exam. You're going to need to formulate two plans, a time plan and a report plan. Regarding your time plan, you'll see that the examiners recommend that you spend two of your four hours reading, planning and preparing your financial analysis. The remaining two hours are then spent writing your report. Many of the students we've met who failed the case study exam admit that they either didn't have a detailed time plan or that they didn't stick to it. This is a very time pressured exam. You have to have a time plan and you must stick to it. As we saw in the profile of competent grades by exam element, running out of time is a common problem for requirement three and the executive summary. You cannot write a good enough report without a good enough plan. These activities are integrated and you need to be very clear how you're going to write enough, but not too much, about all three requirements, making sure that you address all the parts of each requirement that the examiners have set. Very few students who we talk to after they have failed their exam really appreciate how much work needs to go into good enough planning. In addition, in preparation for your exam, you need to have practiced preparing your appendices, which can take a lot of time and have decided on a structure for your answer. The vital aim is to reduce your decision making under pressure to a minimum. So what preparation do you have to do? Your preparation needs to cover 1. Using the advanced information 2. Planning and structuring your answer 3. Practicing doing mock exams 4. Getting feedback on your mock exam results that will help you to improve 5. Analyzing the advanced information for your live exam. And six, practicing using that advanced information to ensure your knowledge is good enough. How can we help you at training by EOS? 
Our aim is to provide you with the support that you consider necessary to pass the case study exam. It doesn't matter whether you want to use us as your sole tuition provider or if you are already signed up with another tuition provider and are just looking for that extra edge. Simply choose the particular product that you want. Along with each programme you purchase, you get access to an online forum where you can post questions for the training by EOS tutors and follow the dialogue between tutors and fellow students. Forums are open until 6pm on the day before the exam. Detailed programme descriptions can be found on our website and all our programmes can be booked online using PayPal. Your online account is created automatically, giving you immediate access to the online programme material. We produce a regular blog covering business news, ethics and helpful exam tips. Once the advanced information for your live exam has been published, we'll highlight specific issues that we think could be relevant to the exam. Our blog is available for any student to receive and you can sign up for it on the blog page on our website. For all of our programmes, you'll find feedback from previous students on our website and there are testimonials on our tuition as a whole under the Why Choose Us page. If you've taken the case study exam before, we recommend that you apply to the ICAEW for your marks feedback for your most recent attempt. You will be charged a fee, but you'll get the grid from the front page of your marking key together with your grades for each part of your exam. If you email those to us, we'll interpret them for you and give you a summary of the areas in which you need to improve to pass, all at no cost to you. I hope this video has given you an insight into the key differentiators in student performance, what you have to do to prepare successfully for the case study exam, and how we at Training by EOS can help you do that. If you need any further information, please contact us. We're looking forward to working with you.